All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to a new Travel and Mockery podcast, the SOP 7 uh, special. Sitting here with Christian and Joe, and hopefully a lot of lows. Joe, have you got any lows this week? Yeah, I got junkyard dogged on the uh, on the run by someone. Was it was it too early for you, like in, on the run? You reckon? It was too early for it. Yeah, like Christian. he came past me and he junkyard dogged me and then uh, smiled at me and then off he <laughs> off he galloped into the distance. What well, do you reckon? You have to wait until the second half before giving the to, the, the junkyard dog. Yeah. Oh uh, well, you got. You, you, I, I think you probably got in my head. That's why you got the win in the end. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's let's um, start off with the beginning of this week. You both, I think, flew out, drove out on like Monday. Was there anything this week that? Because there was quite some tension, I'd say. Uh, here, people were saying like, "Oh, they might have hot to heard the rumors or in our camp, like someone might be sick. Uh, there's some gear they know of our secret potion or whatever." Well, how was it this week? Like. Well, there was a lot of banter between the teams, but it was quite good. Like it was like friendly banter, wasn't it? Like you know, like everyone was kind of taking the piss out of like each other, and like no one really wanted to say what their proper tactics were, were they? So they were like exaggerating either lie and like saying they were going to go faster or slower, or like they were going to have six people in the team on the bike or eight people. You know, I thought it was quite a good laugh, to be honest. Did did it at some point stress you out then, Christian? Hearing mm. some of the rumors or. What did not, you think was the weirdest thing you've he- heard? Not this really, or I did believe that they were joking when they said like 320 on the bike. And I was like, okay. Then, <laughs> did you think that was rubbish? Then? Did <laughs> yeah. you think that was like a load so, of rubbish? So then we would joke, okay, they might, but then Joe would be walking the marathon. But okay, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> because we were, we were aiming for like 335 or something. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and we were expecting you guys to be like maybe seven eight ten minutes faster yeah uh, i bet you guys thought that we were gonna uh, drill the bike because loads of the people on my team just wanted to get a good bike split and then like <laughs> i would get off the bike and it'd be like all right joe just do the best you can see you later <laughs> yeah so uh I, I think you rode quite well as a team in the same way as we were riding like organized and uh, pacing well and i think that's a takeaway like from both teams. like the second half was quite good from both before we uh, go into like the race itself in details was there anything this week that went like completely wrong thinking like oh my god I've got the wrong wheels with me or uh, I forgot my suntan lotion was it something Christian not must there. be a low there must be a massive low not we've that. always got lows. he's obviously happy he's a happy person not, not that I can think about it's because I have like yeah three three bike mechanics taking care of the bike and uh uh, do, do you know, by the way, the, the biomechanics are Dutch. So I was just having I was having a chat with them, and I think then someone told me, yeah, I think he's on on like Team Skipper. I wasn't even like trying to get her information or anything. So after that, someone told him that, it was getting like mega awkward the day after, like uh, <laughs> really? not wanting to talk to me anymore. And uh, it wasn't even like I was gathering information. It was just like yeah. talking about the bike, like what's the hydration system, what's this, like just some general interest. He was acting like all awkward as like some sort of spy. <laughs> That's because he'd had the rumors of you meeting him for that the, swim session. The, the, the <laughs> next the next day, or you know when you came into our group and took like a, a pull in a turn yeah and then the guys in my team they didn't really say anything before they saw you having lunch with joe ah oh, he's the guy in the who came through he's sitting there with joe <laughs> <laughs> like yeah but they, there's not really because everyone was acting all funny right They're saying like oh we can't say how fast we're going you can't say the data you can't say this or that but in the end, if your team plans to go 56 k's an hour, for example, it's not like you're thinking, oh, we need to go like 56 k's an hour now as well. Yeah, I know. It's- People would swap the amount of cyclists they got and stuff, wouldn't they? Like, because like if you know how far someone else has planned to go, then you might try and risk it a bit and go faster. But you can't really make them decisions up on the fly so much, can you? Because like, it's really hard to change from going 54 and then them suddenly start going quicker and think... Oh, all of a sudden we'll try and go one k an hour quick because you get into a route, you get into a, like a, a rhythm, don't you? And everyone knows the power on the front. And like, I think if people haven't practiced it, then they might just uh, blow but, up. And did they, the team think it was like funny that I was there all of a sudden? They were they like, who's that I snake? I think they didn't know who who you were. But also, I think tactically wise, it's all because the tactic I think is that like no better if you're racing it, uh, each other because you have like what's the fast swim, bike, and run. So if Joe were using three guys on the swim to minimize his loss, he would then sacrifice two guys on the bike, which would then yeah. be another loss. So I think his ideal racing strategy would be the same. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon that. I, I would just want to practice doing the swim with someone. Like a... Oh, my God. 
serious uh, trying to mess around and to get into the conversation. Yeah, no, I just I would want it if I was doing this again. I'd want to practice like with a like with swim pacer for longer. You know, get a bit more practice because I felt so chaotic in that. Do you, do you know? Uh, yeah, two uh, swim pacers. No, no, one of them was from well, form. Yeah, yeah. Well, what he you was, call him is up to you. But me. He's behind me. He's like stay behind me. <laughs> he, he said he had to backstroke the half of it to. Uh, <laughs> he had to stay behind me the whole time. He wasn't a swim pacer. Yeah, to have a biker behind you, have a swimmer behind you, it's like. What, what did you think when you saw the, the other? Uh, side I was thinking, you okay, they, they, they say they're having one, and I was looking back as we started. Yeah. Like. They are having two. I see it. I see it. <laughs> but didn't you, you know, had a swim uh, like one from form as well? That's good, like swimming behind you. No, they, no. Didn't, they didn't send one from form with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, we're going to Lars. Yeah. Yeah. Lars was using form goggles. Ah, and, right. and was he? He swam it with form goggles. Yeah, for collecting the data. So Ali should have used the form goggles. Uh, okay, yeah, I don't <laughs> so. know. Yeah, but he must have really struggled to sight with them on because you haven't got like really good range of vision with them, have you? Yeah, I, th- I think he was okay, but I felt also we were drifting a little bit to the right. <laughs> yeah. Speaking about highs and uh, and lows, do you know that uh, uh, Alistair had a massive low? Like uh, when he arrived, he arrived in the middle of like. Uh, like he came in late, 1 a.m., because uh, he was uh, still doing the swim then with Joe. He arrived 1 a.m. There was no one at the desk. And he had to sleep in the sauna under a blanket because there was no one there to give him a room On key. a bench for the first bit. He went yeah. in the sauna in the morning. <laughs> he had to sleep on a bench outside the hotel because he couldn't get in. For race like, morning? Uh, the night before. The night before, Friday night. Ooh. He arrived at 1 a.m., tried to get in the hotel, and the doors were all locked. He couldn't get in. And he didn't text you? Uh, my phone would have been on airplane mode, but he, he didn't send me. I, I didn't get a message from him. But uh, he was at a different. He was at the hotel near the race start, um, and he had to sleep sleep outside on a bench. Oh, would, would that be? Uh, would you be keen to do that before the race? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> that would be horrible, wouldn't it? So his flight was delayed by like a couple of hours. So he was wait. So also, I think his flight was cancelled. So we had to drive to another airport. Then he got here at like one a.m. He was already uh, like tired, annoyed, and then he had to sleep on a bench for the first night outside. <laughs> Going on about the um, the uh, um, the race week again. Then, when you uh, saw each other for the first time this week here uh, with the pacing team around the track, were you then thinking like, "Oh shoot, they're going to go so much faster"? Was there any like tension, or were you thinking like, "Oh my god, the winner, he wants to run a two twenty uh, like"? Uh, not really. I mean, you don't really, you can't tell, can you, how fast people are going when you see them run? Because, like, even if, say, someone's going 51 or 54, it looks the same when you look at it, doesn't it? Don't it? You know, like, I didn't have a clue, to be honest. I thought, just from what you guys were saying and stuff, I knew you were going to go faster than 345. <laughs> I was like, they're definitely, we, that's why we thought you were going to go 330. So we were like, we definitely need to go 320, you know, that mm. needs, so we were kind of seeing what it felt like at that pace. But I didn't have a clue how fast you were actually riding, but I thought, we knew you were going over 51, like, k's an hour, because one of the guys uploaded something. And it, yeah, and it was like 51 something. It was um, straight into Strava, pulling out the file and yeah. analysing it. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, we were like, 51 something, obviously they're going for 330, that's a round number. And I thought, you would probably think in your head, if you went for 330, that you'd have a bit of a gap on me anyway after the swim. And it, if I went too fast on the bike, like you said, then I'd blow up on the on the run. So you you probably thought if you did 330, you'd be in contention, uh, you'd be in contention starting the run but, that you could catch me. But, but what were you thinking like halfway through the bike? Do you think, okay, this is comfortable? Um, it felt hard. It felt like I was working, but I was like, I'm, I've, we've got to go for it to like try and put time in. But I was hoping to put more time in. I was hoping your team would slow down a bit in the last half, but you, they sped up. So I was a bit like disappointed when I got on. <laughs> it had a really good full gas. I think it was like with five laps to go. And so like some of the guys were about to come in again yeah. because we were swapping in and out. Yeah. They were like, they couldn't come in because they were just standing there still with cramps. Really? So they were like, okay, now we have really pushed the paces to absolutely limit. Yeah. When they were like, suddenly just having to pull out, but uh, yeah. Yeah, there was nearly a crash in your team, weren't there as well? Oh, yeah. That must have been scary. <laughs> was that towards the end or was that at the no, start? No, in the oh, beginning. Was it at the beginning? Two laps in. Really? And uh, some, one guy in the middle uh, swapped out and uh, I, I saw him basically in the ground. Yeah. So I just uh, flip, or touched wheel with Matt in front, so Phil first went almost went oh. down. And then when I managed to save myself, I was looking to my left and I could not understand how there was nobody in, in the ground. 
Yeah, yeah. Because I basically saw him in the ground. It was that much kind of tilted well, that in. It would have been such a shame if that would have happened. Like, then the whole battle is over, isn't it? You've just got, yeah, yeah, you've got yeah. like a massive crash going yeah. 55 k's an hour. Like, boom, that's Especially it. Four guys out and yeah. myself in the ground. That would be cool. Meine Güte. And um, um, quick, quick for the listeners, uh, uh, background information about like sub seven. This was obviously not about like breaking an Ironman record or like a full triathlon. It was the world record that is. <laughs> the world record. BBC uh, News have yeah. posted it up in England, like the main sport, the main like uh, news uh, like company has posted up like new world record by Cat. Um, Matthews like seven hours thirty four. She beat the previous record by Chrissy so Wellington by forty minutes. <laughs> So many people don't get what this uh, concept was about. So in, this was not about breaking the record. It was more about what is humanly possible in like a bit artificial circumstances, like with m very good swimmers, with awesome cyclists, and then well, with Kenya, I would say on the run, uh, um, it comes down to like how your legs really feel. But on the bike, you make up the most amount of time. But then it's th uh, such a different effort, isn't it? Like I've been riding with uh, Joe's team yesterday, and what you see is like in an Ironman, it would be very consistent. You would push like a consistent power, and maybe a surge now and then. Whereas in this one, I was constantly like either just under or at Ironman pace, or like way above, like because. It's a bit of elastic, isn't it, uh, off the back? I was doing sometimes 500 watts for a couple of seconds, then easy again, then hard again, because it's constantly an elastic, and that's what's, what's going to like mess up the legs. Did you, uh, did you struggle with that yesterday or in the beginning, like thinking? Because uh, it's quite hard. Also, you need to focus, like riding five centimeters off the wheel. That is really uh, scary, and I think people forget that. Yeah, the focus and also... Uh, like in a course like this, there's no place to rest, like it's no downhill. Mm -hmm. So you just have to make those kind of fake breaks where we're kind of accelerating and then being able to stretch out the hamstring a little bit, going out of the air position and thinking about preparing myself for the run. So, uh, but also I felt I'm riding here in the drafting zone. I can't really complain about the power because I'm never <laughs> touching the front and the guys is riding in front and really pushing. So I felt like, okay, I. This should be okay for me. Yeah, that's, that's what yeah. I was thinking as well. I was thinking, oh, you can't really moan if they're doing turns on the front and you just sat on the back. But like yeah. Yeah, every time like it did ease up a bit, you had to like quickly get off the tri bars, didn't you, just to get a bit of a break and then smash as much drink as you could because you're like, yeah. I don't know when I'm going to get the next opportunity. Yeah, that's you? the, uh, you could literally see, I, I one time saw on the live stream, Christian, that you were, uh, you were trying to get a drink and then there was opening up a gap and you quickly had to down something and then sprint back onto the group. And I think even later on onto the bike, uh, um, like the elastic got broken like mm. you dropped off a little and they uh, like rode off and people are thinking oh you ride in the pace line like 52 k's an hour it must be pretty easy but it's pretty damn hard as well as like you need to get the nutrition in after the bike it doesn't stop you still need to run the marathon do you guys yeah. think right if you were you, if, if you were in like the same you had you kept the same rules so you were allowed 10 pacemakers do you think it would ever be possible for a human in the future to go sub 6 like, if you think of the splits, what you need to do. What, another 40 minutes? So say, like, yeah, do you think anyone would ever be able to do three hours for the bike, you know, if you could get, like, some cyclists that could, you could do 60Ks an hour. 60Ks an hour? That's what you'd have to do, wouldn't I you? Think, you I think you need like, to then go on the equipment. Yeah, like, if you... So, like e-bikes. <laughs> e -bike. <laughs> no, no, a little bit more taking what you did to the extreme, like, with camelbacks, like, yeah. but making more to, to maximise the aerodynamics. Uh... Then I think it's new. easier, but power-wise, to have guys riding much stronger than what you yeah. did, I think it's yeah. tricky. Because you'd have to basically ride three hours, wouldn't you? Run a 220 marathon, then swim 40 minutes, like, that or is, run a bit uh, quicker. Stretching it. Yeah, that I is. know. I mean, especially so what, the marathon. Uh, what do you think would be possible then? Like, with the, say, like, the similar, like, just I, going into, like, more aerodynamics, like you said, the camelbacks and stuff, but not, like riding on like them recumbent bikes so like on normal bikes and stuff do you reckon like sub 630 yeah i think under 10, 10 minutes more on the run i think yeah like i think we can squeeze down to 220 if you look at but christian all I, I spoke to your coach a little bit yesterday and he was saying uh if it would have need if you had to you could have had like more gears you could have run a 220 and i was like well uh <laughs> i i don't really uh if i don't see it i don't believe it because i don't think if you go, if you're like one minute ahead you're thinking like all right i'm going to settle for this one especially like for, with like a mentality if you can put 10 minutes 10 minutes in some t someone you I, would. I, I did tell uh, a little bit when i passed you well but then i thought okay he, he's done he's over but then i did a few, maybe a two laps and then it was 117 i'm like 
it should be three minutes now. And then I start stressing a little bit. Okay, now I need feedback every uh, twice or twice a lap to make sure that I increase, 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 increase. I, so, said to, I said to you when you come past, didn't I? I said, if you blow, I'm going to fucking have you, didn't I? Did you hear me say that when you came past? Yeah. <laughs> what, um, um, so, oh, it was also funny. That must be your low of the week. Swim start race morning. You, uh, you didn't have a watch. They were like, uh, you forgot the watch. Oh, yeah, right. So, like, a funny thing was, I was meant to be using a Garmin for the, for the race so they could get the data for the uh, live show. And I charged up in the night before, but I also had a Wahoo watch next to it. So in the morning, one of the things that I had as a reminder to do was get the Garmin. So in the morning, I thought, right, I'll get the Garmin. So I got the watch, put it on, um, got down to swim start, and the guy was like, can I just keep borrow your phone to make sure the live thing's all connected, you know, and everything. I'm like, yeah, here you go, here's your phone. He's like, all right, that's all right, that's all set up. Can I just see the, can I just, uh, see the watch for a sec? So yeah, yeah, and I went like that, and he went, that's a Wahoo. <laughs> oh shit, I said, I said, I've got the Garmin at home, I've accidentally took this one. So then Tom had to jump on the back of a motorbike yeah, so and get it. Everyone like was a... looking at each other and was saying like, um, where is it, where is it? Is it like in the hotel? And the hotel is a 20 minute drive, isn't it? Right next to my bed. So he said, there. do you know anyone in the hotel? And everyone's like, no, everyone's here at T1 and swim yeah. Like, who's still in the hotel? No one's there. So I sprinted up towards one of the motorbikes. I said, we need to go to the to the hotel as quick as possible. And he literally blitzed around 100 k's an hour through the town and uh, like 150 k's around. I had this really small helmet. You got helmet. like there and back in about T 35 minutes, didn't you? Less, 25 Less. minutes out and back. Wow. I had tears in my eyes sitting on the back of that thing like because of the speed. <laughs> But uh, anyway, yeah, you got that watch, and also the you know, the uh, the race organizers uh, in the morning. Apparently, they didn't have like a, a horn to start the race, and there were ten people, like drunk people, outside, like really early in the morning, and uh, one of them was playing on a horn, and uh, they bought the horn off of him for fifty quid. Really? <laughs> That's what they started the race with. Really? Yeah. Did they? Yeah, they did. I didn't even know that. So um, um, about like top seven. Joe, you wanted to uh, catch Christian uh, on the bike, and a lot of people were saying beforehand, like if you jump back at him like a dog, I'll Those subscribe. I'll that. subscribe to the Patreon. Yeah, yeah. They did, didn't they? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but what were you thinking? Like, shall I do it, or uh, is it a bit tr tricky? You know? Oh no, I was definitely going to do it. You would, would have been disappointed would, if I handed it on. Yeah, it, yeah, of course. Yeah. It wasn't, <laughs> yeah. was, was, it, was it just you or did it? Like, everyone? I think, a couple, I think a couple did. Yeah. Dan Bigham did it as well. Yeah. Like, I know he said. Like, I think a couple of others did, yeah. Did you hear the others as well? Yeah, I heard like two <laughs> or three. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the whole pace line, barking like dogs. But none of, the other one. None of you lot, like acknowledged it. So yeah. I was like, I we were all know, held yeah. it forward. Yeah. And we could see you where we were passing us. Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. Hello. Uh, what were you? Uh, what were you thinking then when you heard it? Did you have like a little laugh in your hat, thinking like this is like what the hell is going on? Actually, I was just thinking, okay, here they come, <laughs> and wait. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Let's wait for the bark. Let's wait for the bark. <laughs> So you were mentally prepped and then on the run, and literally when you passed him on the run, it was right in front of me and Pepe, <laughs> wasn't it? That was quite funny because it was in the middle of nowhere. It was me and Pepe and then the two of you. So it was quite funny it happened again. You you were dialed in first a second, shall I give the ho ho ho? And then... Uh, oh, I think goes. he knew he was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he knew, he knew. <laughs> I bet when you were on the bike and we did it to you, I bet you thought, if I catch him on the run, I'm definitely going to do this. I bet you weren't, yeah? Uh, I was waiting a little bit for Kessel. So just before I passed you, I was... Um, Having a toilet break. <laughs> well, yeah. Did you stop for the loo? Did you? No, I uh, just oh, yeah took a bottle. Did it on the go, on the <laughs> yeah. go. And so, so I was thinking, okay, I have to do it as I pass kind of more people. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> you wouldn't do it like out in the other side of the yeah, course yeah. where nobody can see you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, I was kind of timing it a little bit. You're timing it. Hey, and um. Like apart from uh, so from sub seven, uh, seven uh, Christian, what's uh, what's next then? Next is the PTO Dallas. No, Edmonton. Canadian. Canadian. Edmonton. Yes, back into that park. Yeah. And uh, so a little bit of altitude before, and then not this year, Nevada this time to Fulmer, and uh, back again to altitude after, and then hopefully that's, see. That's where I might be going in front row. Right? Yeah, I know. Oh. You could be uh, training I might together. Might be seeing you out there. Yeah, I might yeah. Be seeing you out there. Doing oh. some secret tra uh, training, LT3 training towards. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna jump in, do some uh, LT1 stuff as well. Like uh, I had Gustav's not going, so I'll, I'll take his place. To Hawaii like, or to former? To former row. He's coming. Is he? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be the free then. I think Triple so. Triple threat. Triple four. Threat. Four of us. 
Four of us. Yeah. <laughs> it's enough to make like a train. We can yeah. practice would together you, on the Would you, um, uh, for example, uh, um, would we Coach be Olaf is giving you a session and uh, he's saying, all right, it's uh, four hours and towards the end, a bit of like uh, LT1 with uh, lactate strips and all that kind of stuff. And Joe and I will be like, with um, lactate there is a quite, quite sneaky little calm up this climb. Shall we like do a little t- chain game towards it? Would you be keen to do it? Like, would it suck you up? Or would you think like, this is the program? This is probably we've got to stick to it. I think I would be able to stay under 0.1 or 1.0 in lactate and still be on the wheel. <laughs> yeah? Yes, yeah, so so I, could, I, I, could, I could do both, both join you and also follow the program. So he's saying that he'd be, he'd be staying on your wheel and he'd still be in the zone, mate. Like, you wouldn't even take him into LT2, mate. He, you, could literally, <laughs> you could literally always lure Joe into a sneaky tempo session yeah. or something like that. We could say, all right, easy, easy ride today, and then towards the end, if it's... Uh... Yeah, but you get lured into it as well. We, we can do the lactate strips, could we? Because we're not, we're not on a federation, are we? And our budget doesn't stri- stretch that, do they? No. They're expensive, aren't they, them lactate strips? Two euros? Two strips? euros a strip. You, if you get a bad it's, dodgy reading, you're just throwing money, aren't you? You're just like yeah, down the drain. It's like a cake every time. like Yeah, that's a, a cake. coffee stop. A cake. <laughs> yeah. That is crazy. All right, so uh, you're going in August, you're going to Fond Ramon? June. Um, no, middle of June. The middle of June. Till the end of August? Yeah, two months. And, uh, well, that's how long you're staying there for, w- is it? With a week in uh, Edmonton in between. Is that your favourite place to train at altitude? Like, you know, if the weather's good, say you went to Sierra Nevada and the weather's good, you went to Fort Murray and the weather's good, do you, where do you prefer? I think the lifestyle in Fort Murray with the, like staying in the chalet. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more, you're feeling yeah. home. I love I love Fort Murray. That's not my favourite place to train. Mm. Like, they're building a new pool out there, aren't they, as well? 50 metre one, I heard. Like, an open air one. Yeah, so that can be great. But- by the way, I, I've got one uh, one question, and I'm curious. Uh, I think every uh, one of the listeners wants to uh, like hear that one. What was the uh, um, like normally in Ironman? You can always see what the bonus is if you win the race. What was in top seven? God, okay. like not much for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> can the listeners know? Is yeah, it- we're waiting for Joe. What my bonus? It, was there, is, it, is, it, is it like open tours? Is, is the Phoenix open about that tour? Oh, I don't, I don't even know, mate. Like, like they said there would be a bonus, but like, I'm not sure what, what that would it is. Be, like more than 50 grand? Oh, no, not that much. Like, not for me, mate. I was a last minute replacement. <laughs> all the others got all the money. <laughs> you probably, Christian they, probably needs to fill that. They took the budget, yeah. Christian they, took the, they gave probably. the budget all to Christian. I just got this scratch, get, man. Yeah, like. I guess. I guess if they didn't take back the cash they paid to the pace, though, the athletes who got injured, then they're. Have you stopped the budget, I guess? Yeah, we left the scraps, mate, for uh, me and Nothing Kat. for travel or mockery. Mate, the Brits, nothing for <laughs> the Brits got the scraps, that's all I can say. Like, me and Kat got the scraps of what was left, you know? It's like if you have a meal and, you know, if you, if you get full before you finish and you give it to, like, the dogs or something, that's basically what, that's basically what we got. There is a there is a bone. All right, so uh, that's next. But what, what about you, Joe? What's... Uh, we just still race Ironman needs. So we said. So and next weekend, you still you said in the back in the podcast you were going to race uh, uh, uh Gerard. Oh, I'm not doing that. I've already told him I'm not doing that. All right. That and was then next knees, week. Knees? Uh, no, probably not. Like ninety percent not going to do it. But I am going to be there. But what I was thinking is because I want to go to Font Moe for a bit. I might um, put my bike, put my run shoes in transition, do the swim and the bike, and if I'm in a good position on the run, I might just crack on. Um, my stag party is like that from after the Iron Man Nice. So like me and a load of friends, originally before I did this, we went to be racing Iron Man Nice, and then we go away for four days on like a stag party, and then I go back home and then get married. On, stag party, was it? Like, do you call it a bachelor party or yeah, something? Bachelor okay, party, okay. Yeah. yeah. So like basically, uh, go, and then go back home like the Thursday before the, that or that after yeah. the race, and then get married on the Sunday. So we were all going to do that, but now because I've done this, I'm like, oh, I don't really fancy doing another Iron Man in like three weeks' time. But I might just go. I might just go there and watch it. Yeah. Cheer him on. Be a spectator for a chance. Well, you say I might go there and, and watch it, but what about the shoes in transition and the swim and the bike? You were just saying about. Yeah, well, I might. Well, probably I'm, I might do the swim and the bike from there. I'm going to watch a bit of it, and then if I get off in a good position and feel alright, then I'd, I've got the opportunity because you'd be kicking yourself, wouldn't you? If you were like, you I'll just, do the swim and the bike. It's I'll just put, a training session. Yeah, well, that's so what. Thinking, yeah, I was thinking. Well, if you push the swim and the bike, the, and you actually got in a good position, then you'd think, oh well, 
I might as well just I'm all in now like I'm committed <laughs> you get to price money yeah, and yeah, free aid stations and yeah exactly so I think I'm going to do the swim and the bike that's what I thought it's a good practice doing a race swim the bike's going to be an awesome course like mountain roads all fully closed that'd be quite fun and then if you put your shoes in transition and you feel alright you can crack on can't you you know and get, uh, do the race because you'd be I'd be gutted if I did the swim and the bike and I actually got in transition and they were like two minutes he's just ahead he looks terrible coming out of transition you'd be like oh shit I didn't put any shoes in transition I can't do anything has anyone got any size 10 shoes I can borrow quick for the race fair enough fair enough yeah, I'd be like taking someone else's transition bag wouldn't I you know like, <laughs> quickly getting their shoes out and like just pretend it's mine because you hear them stories don't you where some age group goes in they're like I tried to find my transition bag and it wasn't it wasn't there like so it must have gone someone like took I don't think the organisation put it out what um um quick about the uh, um the whole the whole Norwegian team is quite science science uh, based isn't it are you also like pretty into like science or the technology or or do you just uh, follow up what they come up with because yesterday we were saying like you were the, the team developed some wings maybe for the uh, for the pacers or or are you just following the plan well i try to be involved as much as i have energy to stay involved uh, but most of it is Ola that uh, brings in and keep in contact with all the partners and develops and comes up with the crazy ideas. Do you think it costs a lot of energy to do to help with all the all the testing, like go to Eindhoven for the wind tunnel testing, then go there, then do this, because you travel quite a lot. Do yeah. you just uh, like to stay in one place and say, mate, just test on some age grouper and then come back to me if it works? Yeah, somewhere. you can't do that for wind tunnel testing, can you? No, not for the wind yeah. tunnel, but like for but all like, the other stuff. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Like we do invest like a lot of time, energy, and money into the testing, mm -hmm. and also like going going to the lab. It's not necessarily a hundred percent ideal session, but the feedback we get back again and and the learning is mm -hmm. making us understanding what to do more. And also, since you're using so many days, hours, uh, a year of training. You want to do like make sure that you do it better and more. Smarter do you than pay for the testing, or does the federation pay for it? Like, is Norway like invested in it? Then? Well, this year is private. Is it? So, so you've all been, you've literally just been investing it purely in yourself to go as fast as possible. Uh, so it's like I've got budget and stuff like yeah. that from the sponsors, and uh, oh, right. I will pay for some of it myself. Yeah. And, so it's a big commitment, like, yeah. in, it, in it, you know. But it, it is easier now. If you look at his tax accounting, probably he's got something like tax uh, deductible lactate though, strips it? minus 10,000, yeah. something like that. You know, all the prize money, all the sponsors he's got, <laughs> you'd think he'd be, like, driving around in a Ferrari, really nice house. But when you look at all the money he spends on lactate strips... Have an e-bike. E-bike to yeah. get commute yeah, back yeah, home. Yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah. uh, ten thousand is actually more more or less where we are at lactate like trips. <laughs> ten thousand pounds a year on lactate. So. Oh wow, wow that's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> what about um, what about besides triathlon then, uh, Christian? So you've had a hard training day. You come uh, you come like home. Would you be uh, so if you're training with Gustav in in like at altitude? What would you like? Because we always like rent a house and chill out together, like watch movies or do whatever. What's uh, what's the routine in the Norwegian camp then? Bake cookies, just anything. Bake cookies, make pizza, or do you actually bake cookies? When no, you I, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> no. That, that, that's what the, I was thinking. That sounds all right, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's what the girls do in the team, or the once in a while. Uh, I'm more the kind of pizza guy. I make yeah. the pizza, uh, but uh, in, not much. Having a pony at midday. Listening to Professor Boo talking about training. Yeah. Yeah, getting a little bit of lecture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, every day up really? with the book and writing. and In Sierra Nevada, there's like not much going on, is there, like outside the center? So, what do you guys do then to keep like occupied? Like, do you watch films? Like, would you watch Netflix? Like, would you um, say, hey, good stuff, do you want to watch this series or something like that? We, or, we never watch Netflix do you together. Not? <laughs> no. So would you just sit? Do you go to your rooms or do you like sit? Is there like a, uh, a place where you all go and chill out? Like, because there's a pool table and stuff there in there, I've seen. Yeah, but I haven't really used that. I'm sitting maybe a little bit extra at the breakfast table or lunch table yeah if not i go back to the room and just lay there listen yeah. to podcast <laughs> relax just chilling out putting um, off your feet and now we are investing a little bit more into single rooms so we have more time for ourselves too oh yeah because yeah. you always have uh, now that the budget is growing with the winds when they're there for two months they spend too much time training with each other they're like i just want a break from this guy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right is um what time is it? Oh, we've got, still got something, right, Christian? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, like a, he's a busy man, Joe. Um, all right. Um, what, what about if you're, uh, if you're back in... Uh, five minutes. Five, yeah. what, if, what about if you're back in, uh, in, in Bergen, then? Is, uh, like, what's the, uh, the routine there? Oh, then it's uh, 
Like, like the story no. behind the man besides Schwafeln. Normally what, what it's a morning like? swim. Um, just a, yeah, morning swim from <laughs> after the swimmers have left the pool. So we come in there at 8 o'clock. Uh, so I yeah, eat breakfast, take my e-bike down to the pool. 3.5k of commuting, swimming, maybe running with the guys after the swim too. And then I do take my e-bike back home, having a power nap, a little bit of snacks, eating, going out for a ride. And then... Did, did this training all day? Dinner. That's what you got to do, mate. Living the dream, mate. Like, if you, if you want to get fast... So much if you want to get fast, that's what... He just, he trains once a day. He just trains once a day. He just trains once a day. Twice top. No, I shut up. You do, you do, you do. No. What do you do on a Monday? I always train twice a day. On a Monday now, I wear gym and swim. Gym and swim. And gym but and Monday's swim. Monday's the only day I would, in the past, like, train once He always a tells me I'm doing more than one session a day. Because he's saying, like, I speak to my friends who are cyclists. Yeah, I spoke to One full rest day a week, what do you think? Mm. We do nothing, nothing. Or, no, or just not one every, trip, week. Like every not, week. Not every week. I think. Uh, Would you have a rest one, day? A rest day can be good, but you don't need to do it without every training. Week. You can do like three k swim. Yeah. Ten k. Rest day, but you can't do it yeah. without training. Exactly. <laughs> it's it's a rest day. Here's, a, here's a rest <laughs> day every rest week. Day rest day every week. We does nothing. He's trying to talk. No, tell I'm me having a swim. No, 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 but I said. You, when we were in Girona, you were moaning because you were saying you spoke to your friends who were sightless and they reckon that you should do three days on, one day off. No, because um, they were saying triathletes always train 30 hours a week and recovery is also really important. And that also came out when uh, that Vanderpool's his uh, training schedule came out, you know, the uh, ice skating champ. And he's having two rest weeks a week. Uh, yeah, but rest you seen what, yeah, but mate, what, on your normal days, you're doing two hours training. Shut and up, he's doing 11 hours training it's like, not true. on some of them. <laughs> it's not yeah, true. All right, five it's out, true. four hours. He was doing like seven hours a day, weren't he, that guy, for like four or five days straight, mate. If you did that, you'd be cooked and need a rest day, like... <laughs> He's, he's always trying to beat me down. <laughs> he's always, um, hey, I've got, I think he I've got a little do. Instagram post of the week. Have you? Do you know what I think he should do? What? Go ahead. I reckon at the end of the year, you should. You know, like Jan Fredino did that like gravel race. Yeah. Like you've got loads of like nice mountains and trails there, haven't you? I reckon you should organise like some kind of like mini Norseman triathlon like near where you live. Yeah. Get us all over for it. Book the sponsor shop, get to Avalon Mockery there. Yeah. The problem is in Bergen, all the road goes around the mountains. What about trails though? Mountain bikes and stuff? Not much for mountain bikes. Is it's, it not? It, it's good for trail running. So we're going to do, do like trail running, swimming, trail running. Yeah. Like what about like, yeah, a swim run thing, shouldn't we? Or something like that. Yeah. Is there not oh, any... We need is a bike. Yeah, oh, is there any big... Is across there any, the fjords. Is there any uh, big... Is there any climbs that you can do there? Like big like mountains that you can ride up? Run. What, but not for biking? Uh, it's not many big clients for riding. What Running. About some, what about somewhere else in Norway? There must be some place. Joe, just call there one time and have a little look. Yeah. Yeah. Come, come to Bergen World Cup. Bergen uh, World Cup. Yeah. Send a request to British Triathlon Federation if you can uh, get into the World Cup start list in October. No. <laughs> quick, August. Quick uh, Instagram post of the week. Um, it uh, it was your um, it was your coach, mate. Boo. Yeah. What did he say? Well, he didn't say anything. Um, I saw him riding yesterday, so it was. Did you find it hot yesterday? Well, when I had that weed killer thing that they were spraying me with, it was lovely. Yeah. Did, yeah. You find, did you find that guy working in the garden here and just <laughs> come on? You should know. Up, apparently, yeah. Alistair brought it off Amazon before he came. <laughs> no, <Like>, but he <laughs> was. <laughs> Your coach was riding around in a Norwegian Christmas sweater, something like that. Well, it was like 27. I changed my T-shirt three times because I was absolutely melting like a cheese. And he was riding around in a Christmas sweater. And I think um, it, he did it on purpose. And you think he'd pain. be used to the cold, wouldn't you? So it'd be yeah. even hotter being Norwegian, wouldn't yeah, you? Like exactly. But the pain is just a mental thing, you know? And the same with the temperature. It's just a mental thing. He's probably it's, testing something under his shirt again, like testing something for the heat and his, his yeah, water absorption or he's, something. He's a little bit embarrassed of his uh, torso. It doesn't look <laughs> as fit as we do. So that's why he's... What, what about um, a bullshit buster, Christian? Have you got a bullshit buster? Something you've seen around over the last couple of months on Instagram, you're thinking, this is total bullshit. Oh, yeah. Any or kind training, of like training stuff. product, training uh, thing. I was thinking that the 320 was a bullshit. <laughs> the what? That was going to be the a three... bullshit buster. Yeah. <laughs> and Joe's 320 bike split. Oh, bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I will give it to him. He was going to bullshit bust me on it. <laughs> But have you got anything else that was like on your mind for for weeks? Like I don't get why people would do. Uh, uh, I don't believe in the K hole, or uh, I don't think uh, ulti free is like. Uh, like one of our bullshit busters before was that this guy who was riding on the uh, tra on the uh, turbo trainer, you know, mm. the bike trainer, and he had twenty kilos worth of weights on his back <laughs> to strengthen his back up while he was riding <laughs> on it. That was that was one of the that was a classic, wasn't it? Yeah, what was we had, classic, yeah. yeah. 
Have you seen anything like that? Any dodgy training philosophies that you see on there? Mm, no. What about full rest days every week? Yeah, that, that's... <laughs> I don't know, like the ones who is recovering more than that training, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, you bullshit no, like. <laughs> well, you get, get the message in before the session is done. I reckon you should coach Tom. I reckon I reckon uh, Olaf should uh, coach but, Tom. I reckon he could transform into a racehorse. Well, remember, Joe, when we did a. Uh, I mean, um, it's not going too bad for me. Looking at, for example, I'm pretty strong on the bike. Yeah, but, but normally I say, <laughs> if if you do what I do on Monday, you do that on Tuesday on Strava. And you just take off like twenty percent. So you just copy my training. All right, that's yeah. normally work. Everything you're doing, I just yeah, copy just do it one day later. Because but the thing is, I've had a chat with this about Michael in St. George. I just wouldn't be able to uh, to do the training. What you've got, as in, you would do, for example, five hour ride, which of four hours at LT one, which would be something like at the IMM pace, or maybe a little bit above or under. I don't know. Um, it just wouldn't be possible to do that in the Netherlands. And I'm not going to do it on Swift because it's too boring. So Why wouldn't it be possible in the Netherlands? Because you've got so many traffic lights and you break it up. Oh. Or you've got like a stop or whatever. You even can't do no, like can. four hours. I can do four hours like that where I live. Really? Yeah, like there's no traffic lights at all, mate. I've got like well, roads I don't that... Know. I've, ridden in, I've ridden in your place and nah. I remember a couple of stops. But there's like no traffic lights, mate, where I live. <laughs> all right, Christian, uh, it's got to go. Thank you mate. for now. Thanks and for the chat. A little final. <laughs> get the legs up, get the legs up. It will come one more in October, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And this time, the highway, you, this right. time you won't get a chance to do it back to me. <laughs> All right, thanks Good for listening, night. everyone. See you, Christian. See you. Hey, uh, Joe, uh, have a good trip, by the way, both back home. And um, yeah, thanks for listening. Make sure to like, subscribe. Oh, and by the way, if you want to see some videos of this week, we did a uh, race video and two other videos. Go over to our Triathlon Mockery YouTube page. And um, uh, yeah, make sure to uh, subscribe to that one because we're not posting it up anymore on Joe's channel because that was his private one. And uh, yeah, basically all the Triathlon Mockery related stuff we're going to post on the Triathlon Mockery as well as uh, this one as a video. Uh, so all the uh, we're going to post up again the, the podcast on the uh, YouTube as well if, if you want to watch it. So um, that's it for now. If you want to support us, go over to our Patreons. And, uh, yeah, give the boys a, uh, a thumbs up. Um, Joe, see you next week. Yeah, see you later. Bye.